England has officially decided we've had quite enough summer weather and we fast forwarded back to winter basically. It is absolutely pouring today if you can see it on my any of my windows or hear it on the windscreen it is a pouring dark rainy cozy kind of day but that is fine with me because that is exactly what we've got planned today just a really lovely cozy day here in the Cotswolds and first stop this morning is actually probably top five favorite places in the Cotswolds for me definitely up there which is Burford Garden Centre now if you're here in Garden Centre and you're thinking how exciting can a garden centre really get well let me tell you you've not been to the Burford Garden Centre. It's really, really big. There are so many different sort of sections to it. And I don't know who is the buyer or who curates Burford Garden Centre. It's just so tastefully done. It's not just a garden centre in the sense that they like sell plants and gardening tools. They also have a clothes section. They've got a whole pet section. Everything in it is so beautiful. They've got a bookshop, they've got a cafe, um, and the little sort of garden cafe in there is so good. The food is actually delicious, and they've got loads of things like salads. The cakes are possibly the best you'll find in the Cotswolds. That's a big statement, but the cakes are second to none. They are delicious, so we'll get a selection later. They have a kind of farm shop style food section to it, and they sell all of the food that I love. It's all loads of organic, really lovely, um, and like locally sourced things. It's just, it's just a really good time. You'll have to trust me on that. And there's a couple of bits that I want to pick up this morning. There's a few food bits, there always is. But then also I want to have a look at some wellies because now that the weather, is changing and even if we do get a bit more sort of summer after this it's England it's always rainy it's always wet so I'd really like to get some new wellies and I'm sure there'll be treats for Rue and definitely treats for me when we get to the cafe I love their cakes they are so so delicious that's stop one today so let's get on the road and I'll show you why I love it so much I know that you're gonna love it too bits of the whole garden centre is they have this really beautifully stocked and actually really quite big bookshop and last time we were here mum and I noticed that there's a whole kind of section of interior design books which hopefully is going to be very relevant if this sort of house move um, all goes through so I wanted to come and have a look at them just to get some design ideas but also this is the kind of bookshop that you could just spend half a day in. So this is the interior design book section that I was talking about. So we've got Country House Living, we've got this one called At Home. I just think that this is such a beautiful book to have on your coffee table or something. That's very sort of like farmhouse rustic. Perfect English farmhouse, which has also got lots of lovely kind of inspo in it. You could just spend honestly an hour just flicking through all of these books. This is a book presumably by Farrah and Bork called Living with colour, um, which is really interesting because obviously you can kind of get a feel for all of the different colours. I definitely think in the next house I want to be more adventurous and not kind of just cream wash my whole house, which is what we did in Manchester. Oh, this whole section's called Country House. Look at this man, by Farron and Ball. Yeah, this might give me some good ideas for colours I could work with. This is another one by Farrah and Ball. They give you different ideas for different parts of your house, so it goes into detail. For example, this section is about colours for panelling. That's actually a really lovely colour. There's a whole section on wallpaper as well, which again is something that I'd quite like to experiment a little bit more with in this next house. These are a very similar print to the ones that I have on the chair in my bedroom. They're just a slightly more green tone. I 
have some really lovely tones of their bath towels. I like this brown and then around here there's a sort of, would you say that's pink mum? It's kind of like a sandy, salmon pink. Yeah, like a salmon pink. remember a couple of videos ago um, I showed that we'd got the girls harnesses from here this is where they're from they've got them in all the different colors and just even everything like we love these dog shoes like how cute is that little chicken and then today down here they've got these little llamas how cute are they When I was saying it's so well curated here, this is kind of what I meant. This is just their cleaning section, but everything's such kind of natural, earthy materials. It's just, even their cleaning things are pretty. This is just olive oil, cashew nuts, basil, sea salt and pine nut. I have just found that they do an even bigger one of the best days. It's four kilograms, this is absolutely vast. They also have black kale pesto, which I've never tried. How delicious does this sound? Wild fennel, tomato pesto, I might have to pick up one of those. This is a really great brand because they make everything with olive oil. Um, so they don't really use any of the seed oils. So this is an artichoke paste and it's just with extra virgin olive oil. And even the pasta just looks delicious. The texture of this, so yum. Right, that was a successful trip to Burford Garden Centre. I picked up quite a few bits actually, um, a couple of little treats for myself, which I'll show you when we get home. But then also mostly lots of bits for dinner because we've decided that we're going to do a big family dinner this evening. My sister's going to come round, dad's going to cook, which is always the best treat ever. So I got a few bits for that. And then I think mum and I are also going to call in at an organic kind of farm shop that we sometimes go to just to get more of the fresh fruits and veggies and things like that. But they also have a really good, also completely organic cafe there. And they have loads of big plates of salads and just really yummy food. But we're also going to pop into Burford itself now because there's a couple of really lovely um, antique shops and just home kind of shops on the high street and I feel like Burford really has got me in the mood just to look at all of the interior inspiration. Autumn is kind of very slowly creeping into the shops despite only being in August and that being definitely the middle of summer still but it's nice just to have a bit of a browse and have a look but I have to show you because I am about to eat one. I picked up some cakes to take home because like I was saying earlier they are just the best at Burford. I'm going to have to have a bite of one now so I thought I'd show you before I ruin them so for myself i got what i always get which is this little vegan raspberry it's kind of like a vegan raspberry cheesecake but it's on a sponge rather than obviously on a biscuit kind of um base but i'm gonna have have to have a bite of this i'll show you the other ones in a second as well mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I honestly think this is my favourite cake ever. It's such a nice mix between a cheesecake and a kind of Victoria sponge. It is truly delicious and it's plant-based, um, which is amazing. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, one more bite and then I'll try and save it for after dinner. Otherwise, I'll be very jealous of everybody else eating their cakes. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, let me just quickly show you the other two cakes that I chose for everybody. 
I got, right, can we see this? I don't want them to all fall over. I can show you them later actually when we get them out, but basically it's an orange and polenta cake. And then the other one is a coffee and walnut cake. And I feel like everybody will love them. So I'll show you everything else I got later. But for now, we are going to head into Burford Town Centre and then go straight on to the farm shop and then we'll go home and probably walk the dogs while hopefully dad um, makes a start on a big family dinner, which will be lovely. In the house that we currently have an offering on there's like a really lovely little porch as you go in and mum and i were saying that this bench would be perfect just so perfect for that space we were just having a look i think it's 225 it's a bit premature obviously i can't i can't be buying furniture for a house i don't even own yet but yeah definitely lots of inspiration today I would show you the couple of bits that I got while we were out this morning. Um, so starting off, I just got a couple of books. I got this one, which is called The Flower Hunter, Creating a Floral Love Story Inspired by the Landscape by Lucy Hunter. I have to be honest, my main motivation for picking this up was the way it was displayed in the shop was just so autumnal and cozy. So it's a really nice one as well, just to have on your coffee table, to have a flick through. I mean, look at this, I just saw. Look at that gorgeous misty shot there. It really is the perfect kind of autumnal coffee table book. So gorgeous. So this one is more what I actually went for because this one is an interiors book and it's also all based in the Cotswolds. It's currently wrapped in plastic and I don't want to unwrap it until it's safely back in Manchester. So I'll have to show you more of the inside once I do get um, home but it's called At Home in the Cotswolds Secrets of English Country House Style and it just has so many beautiful interior pictures I mean the one on the back is a really lovely photo on the front here I don't know whether you can see but that little 
dog is an Irish Terrier, which is what my parents' dog, um, Poppy is. She's an Irish Terrier and they're very rare. Um, they're actually kind of like a dying breed because nobody really gets them anymore. So when I saw it was an Irish Terrier, I just thought this is meant to be. But like I said, I will show you more of that when I get it home and I've actually unwrapped it. And then the only other thing I got is a real, real treat to myself. These are La Chamou. So they obviously just look like wellies, but they're wool lined. And for any of you who like your winter walks or your winter dog walks, you will know just how freezing cold your toes get in wellies. No matter how thick your socks are, my toes are always freezing. So I just feel like these are gonna be an absolute game changer. They're wool lined all the way through to the bottom. Um, and also these are made from like a really, really flexible rubber. So I just think they're gonna be so comfortable. And I know that this brand does loads of different types of wellies and they're all kind of focused around um, wearability so that you can wear them all day long, whether you're working outdoors or whether you're obviously just walking the dog on a long hike or something. They're designed with your kind of feet in mind and your comfort in mind, which is just everything that I need for my long winter country walks. But I will say that their wellies do range from, I think it's from anything around about 90 pounds all the way up to 500 pounds. I don't think I'll be spending 500 pounds on wellies. Um, although if any wellies were worth it, I would say it probably would be these. I would say if you're going to invest in a pair of these, definitely make sure um, it's the neoprene lined or the wool lined wellies. I'll link these and I'll link um, the other ones that I tried on that I thought were really worth the investment as well because their website is a bit of a minefield. There's loads of different types. And like I said, they go all the way up to, I'm not even sure what the 500 pounds ones do. Um, but yeah, I'll link the ones that I tried on today and loved, including these ones. Also while I'm at it, I will link anything else that I have talked about today. And also just all the bits and pieces I've been wearing all day. I've been really trying all my links. So hopefully I'm remembering to keep up with it. Um, but yeah, that's everything that I got. Dad's using this in the dinner tonight, so I'll be able to tell you if it's any good. We've all come to sit outside and have tea and cake, so I thought I'd show you the cakes from earlier. So this is the coffee and walnut cake. It looks like chocolate too though, um, which looks delicious. And then that one is orange and polenta and pistachio. And I've got my big mug that I got last time. I was there as well. Good morning everyone, it is now the next day. I 
I was up this morning with mum, we took the dogs out for a lovely walk and now we are popping to the farm shop. I'm actually driving back to Manchester tonight but I'm also going back with my sister and my dad. Um, my sister's bought a new car, I think it's the same as this car um, but all black, all black is her kind of vibe. So, but that's up in Manchester or near to Manchester anyway that she's got the car from. Since I'm driving back anyway I'm taking my dad and my sister with me and they are going to stay over at my house tonight but I have absolutely nothing to feed them. My fridge as always these days is bare. Um, I think because I've been between the Cotswolds and home so much I keep running my fridge down to being completely empty just so I'm not wasting any food and then I get home and there's nothing there and it's just this whole cycle. I'm going to pop to the farm shop and pick up some bits so that I'm able to feed myself and my guests when we get home later. Also that's just reminded me to touch on another point which is Rue because some of you noticed in last week's video Rue wasn't up in Manchester with me. The reason for that is just because for the next month or so um, I am between Manchester and the Cotswolds and also going on holiday with Ella so much that it kind of just feels unfair to constantly have Rue in the car. Obviously I'm here half the time anyway and then once I'm back of course I'll be taking her back up to Manchester with me. That's why she's not by my side 24 7 as she usually is at the moment. I'm just trying to do what's fair for her rather than thinking about me and my cuddles that I miss at bedtime. Anyway I'm going to get on the road to the farm shop so I'll see you when we get there. <laughs> This is so delicious, this aubergine mezze. Look how pretty the packaging is on these chutneys. Look at these flavors of ice cream. They've got gooseberry and elderflower. They've got pistachio, salted caramel. They've got mint chocolate and stracciatella, so some sort of cheese. Beetroot raspberry ice cream, strawberry sorbet coffee and cardamom that sounds so yummy and then at the bottom banoffee ice cream i think mum will be taking one of these home also look how delicious this apple and pistachio cake looks i bet the apple pie is really good as well mum family apple crumble This is so gorgeous. I'm really hoping that they sell this somewhere because I think they're using this to just pot plants. But that is so beautiful. the state of me this evening my hoodie's actually covered in matcha somewhere but this is just my comfort hoodie I love this hoodie um, and I've got my hot water bottle it may only be August but there's just something so comforting about having a hot water bottle it's just been one of those days today, if I look a little bit worse for wear, um, that's also how I feel this evening. I had always planned to come on and just finish off the vlog, but also to show you the bits that I picked up at the farm shop with my mum. 
Um, but today just has not had that on the cards for me. And it's currently Saturday evening. So you'll see this first thing tomorrow morning and the days just run away with me. And I really hate showing you new things that I've bought when it's not daylight or proper daylight anyway. We've just about got a bit of daylight. I think it's about nine o'clock. The sun's very much setting. Um, but I just feel like you can't really ever tell the colours of things unless it's natural daylight. So I'll show you those bits in next week's vlog because next week, which I am going to start filming tomorrow, I think, I have never needed just a chilled, reset, cosy home day more than I need it right now. I just think it's just been a bit of a week this week and I'm so conscious to never come across as moany or complaining about anything, not even just when I'm talking to you, but also I just think I give myself a really hard time whenever I catch myself like thinking negatively or feeling down or complaining or feeling sorry for myself in any way because I'm so aware that I have so, so much to be grateful for in life. And that's something I truly reflect on every single day of my life. I know it almost sounds like a bit of a cliche, but I, really firmly believe there is no greater luxury in life than having your health and your family and your family being happy and healthy. I truly think that is everything. Like that is, if you have that, if you can say that you're happy and healthy and so are the people that you love, you have everything. And I have so much more than that too. And I, yeah, I think about that and I reflect on that multiple times every day. And I've not spoken for a really long time actually about anything to do with like manifesting or gratitude or any of that sort of thing. Um, but obviously that does still play a huge part in my life. And I'm so conscious of my thoughts always being positive and always being so grateful for everything I have and the absolute abundance in my life. I almost feel like I don't give myself room sometimes to reflect on the fact that just because I have so much to be thankful for doesn't mean I can't have bad days too and things that I wish were different or things that I find hard and that sort of thing. I actually really cannot remember where I was going with this um, but just to say that today has just been a day and I think I'm about to get my period and so that's definitely working against me. I just think your hormones at that time of the month just really don't want you to be happy they don't want you to be positive it has a huge huge effect on my ability to see things clearly and to keep things in perspective when I'm at this time of the month so I know that um and it's not even as if anything has really happened today that's particularly you know even worth feeling down about Ah, oh, it's just been one of those days. It really has. Do you know what I need to do this evening? I've got my hot water bottle. I need, honestly, I need a hot chocolate. I'm going to make myself a hot chocolate. I am going to sit in bed and I'm going to watch a Nancy Myers movie. I think I might watch The Intern. That is such like a feel good movie. I don't think there's any kind of bad day that a Nancy Myers movie can't at least slightly improve. But like I said, I definitely need a really chilled couple of days. So next week you can expect a very cosy home reset kind of because this house i've really let this house run away with me this week um kind of vlog but i hope you enjoyed being down in the Cotswolds with me this week i'm sending all of you so much love i hope if you're having a not so great day or even just a hormonal period kind of day that you give yourself the grace to get yourself some chocolate put a nancy myers movie on get a hot water bottle and just give yourself the whole afternoon evening day if you can just to be kind to yourself um because everybody deserves a break and everybody deserves to just wallow in whatever they're feeling justified or not once in a while because we are all human um so yeah i hope you have a lovely week and i will catch up with you next weekend bye guys